Thank you for joining me on my YouTube channel. My name is Christiana Sagi. On this channel, I will be teaching about international law, and these teachings will be in the form of short weekly lecture series. Over time, I will be surfacing varied concepts of international law. When and where applicable, these concepts will be analyzed and brought to you as it relates to current trends in international law as they arise. At the end of this lecture, you will find the transcript of the lecture in the link below. Also, for current trend and analysis in international law, you can subscribe to my blog. All the details you will find in the comment section below. For the 20th lecture in this lecture series, we'll be addressing the Pacific settlement of disputes. It is a fair assumption that at its core, international law aims to ensure the maintenance of international peace. This principle is entrenched in the Charter of the UN and forms the foundation for the negotiation and adoption of very many international instruments. In our previous lesson, we expatiated on the prohibition of the use of force. In this lesson, we will be exploring the options open to states in conflict management and resolution. What is Pacific Settlement of Dispute? Customarily, the means of dispute resolution between conflicting states was within the exclusive preserve of the sovereign states in question. Of course, this included war, but over time and with a progressive prohibition on the use of force in contemporary international law, the obligation to settle dispute through peaceful means became entrenched as a general rule. Pacific settlement of dispute imposes an obligation on sovereign states to manage conflict through peaceful means, avoiding escalations and disturbance of international peace and security. This obligation we see entrenched in Article 2.3 of the UN Charter, which states that all members shall settle their international disputes by peaceful means in such a manner that international peace and security and justice are not endangered. The ICJ reiterated this position in paragraph 55 of the case concerning the aerial incident Pakistan versus India, where the court reminded the parties, Pakistan and India, that they have an obligation to settle their dispute by peaceful means and in particular, the disputes arising out of the area incident of 10 August 1999, in conformity with the obligations which they have undertaken. In terms of methods available to states for dispute settlement, there are two international instruments that serve as pointers. The UN Charter, specifically Article 33, and the 1970 Declaration on Principles of International Law Concerning Friendly Relations and Cooperation Among States. Both of these instruments enumerates the following methods. Negotiation, inquiry, mediation, conciliation, arbitration, judicial settlement, resorts to regional agencies or arrangements, or other peaceful means of their own choice. The avenues for conflict management and dispute resolution are often categorized under two heads, either as diplomatic or adjudicative. Diplomatic procedures entail utilizing skills that serve to, beyond resolving the conflict, preserve the diplomatic relations between conflicting states. These can be achieved through negotiation, inquiry, mediation, 
or consolation and good office. In contemporary international law, arbitration as a means for Pacific settlement of disputes may become the first option at the breakdown of diplomatic attempts and as a prelude to adjudication. According to Article 15 of the 1899 Hague Convention for the Pacific Settlement of Disputes, international arbitration has for its object the settlement of differences between states by judges of their own choice and on the basis of respect for law. So, arbitration offers the conflicting states the opportunity to decide who would act as judge, normally called the arbiter. Unlike with judicial settlements, which become binding between states when pronounced, an arbitration decision, which is called an award, is only binding on the parties to the arbitration upon the consent of the parties involved. Because there are a number of tribunals under international law, it is essential to distinguish which bodies are political, administrative, or judicial. To determine if a body is judicial in nature, its procedures have to be examined. When you begin to unpack this, you will realize that there are a number of bodies set up for judicial settlement under international law. But the ICJ holds its place as the principal judicial organ of the United Nations. Another means of which Pacific settlement can be reached is through resort to regional agencies or arrangements. There is a plethora of examples on this front. Most of the regional systems have also entrenched in their constitutive charter or other instruments an obligation on their members to ensure that disputes are resolved through peaceful means. For example, we see this in Article 4E of the Charter of the African Union, Article 24 of the Charter of the Association of South East Asian Nations, Article 27 of the Charter of the Organization of the Islamic Conference, Article 29 of the Convention Establishing the Association of the Caribbean States, Article 58.2e of the Revised Treaty of the Economic Community of West African States, uh, popularly known as ECOWAS, the Charter of the Organization of American States, the OAS, and the European Convention for the Peaceful Settlement of Disputes. I have gone ahead to include the link to all of these instruments in the transcript below. In a nutshell, we have highlighted the obligation of states to settle their disputes through peaceful means, some of which are encapsulated in the UN Charter. And we have highlighted during the course of this lesson. It is important to note that there are no priority among the methods mentioned or any other peaceful method for that matter. It is essentially the prerogative of the states in question to determine what means of dispute resolution, either alone or in combination, can serve them. So I want to say thank you so very much for joining in. Remember to like, share, subscribe, leave your comments in the comment section below, and hit the notification bell so that you're notified when there's a new video. We would also like to connect with you on Facebook and Twitter, and let us know the content you'd like to see. Thank you.